All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about a sequential function chart and using that in a batching type scenario. Generally speaking, they are used quite a bit in batching, uh, although you can use batching in many different avenues. Again, uh, this is just another uh, alternative or a way to program with um, you know Rockwell Automation and with Studio 5000. Now I am using a 3D simulator, uh, so all this does work, and I will show you this um, as this goes. You can actually see it working. Uh, so that you'll get a very good comprehension of what we are teaching here. Now, if I do stop it right now, it's going to take, it's going to shoot to the other path. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is widen this screen up so you can see the whole thing. So let's just get rid of the controller property. And that way you can see the whole, uh, right now you can see it's draining and then it come down and finish. We'll let it finish again before we explain it. So to get into explaining the sequential function chart right now. All right, so the very first step, which is step zero, 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 okay? This is set to two milliseconds, and it's an initial step. So that means it's the very first step. It's not a normal type, right? It's the very first, because you can change the type of the step. Uh, so meaning, which where do you want to start in the process? So we've uh, triggered that, and you can only change that when you're obviously uh, editing or, or that case when it's running you cannot change that so uh, that just know that if it is initial that is where it's going to initially start um, and when it comes out here we're waiting on the start push button so in the transition of the step right so I, it's going to stay in step zero 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 until we push the start button and then when we push the start button this next step will come in here and say we're going to actually take the bit batch active and we're going to uh, in, uh, turn that bit on with a, indexing it to a one. So it's either one or zero because it's it's a Boolean, right? So either a zero or a one. Um, now the start light too, we're going to turn on the start light of the push button. And then we're going to come down and it's going to make another decision. So this is where uh, a lot of things uh, tend to get, well, uh, confusing when it comes to uh, you know, a standard branch or a standard uh, or a standard uh, sequential function charts linear and maybe don't have branches, but a lot of them do have branches. And this one happens to have a branch to say, okay, if the batch is active and the tank level is uh, less than one, okay, then we're going to go over here to we're going to use transition nine. However, if the batch is active and the tank level is greater or equal to one then we're going to go ahead and transfer this way all right so we're going to go ahead and start using this path and we're going to use this path to basically evacuate uh what was in the tank and then we're going to go ahead and, and start the process over so it can be a fresh batch however and that's mainly for like a recovery type scenario what this is going to be doing is we'll go ahead and watch this run you can see that when we push the start button it comes over here and it takes the the path on the left because the tank level was less than um, one and then it opens up the inlet valve which is filling right now and the make sure that the outlet valve is closed as well so what we're doing is we're, we're basically writing small structure text inside of the action uh, right here so that in the step uh, underscore zero zero two what we're doing is we have an action which is uh, the action 001 now both of those these are two separate bits and again they're booleans so we're it's either a value of one or two and we're waiting uh, we were waiting until the tank level got to 1200 pounds or greater and the inlet was open and batching is not uh, or batching was not active now currently we're in mixing and we want to mix for a set amount of time. So instead of having the timer run uh, down here and, and monitor a timer down in the transition, which you could do, um, we're going to utilize the step. And we're going to say we want to run the mixing time, which the, you can see the blade is running or the mixer is running. Uh, we want to run the mixing time to a preset of uh, basically one minute. So we're going to right here in, 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 in milliseconds, it's basically 600 or um, 60,000, right? So that's one minute. And notice this step, again, when it comes down to it, is a normal step. It's not an initial step. You only have one initial step. So uh, 
as soon as this is done, it's gonna we're gonna monitor that bit and say if it's done and the inlet valve is not open, okay, then we want to go ahead and transition to the next spot. And what we're saying here is we're gonna say that it's going we're gonna go ahead and uh, the outlet valve uh, the outlet valve open we're gonna go ahead and turn that into a one so we're gonna turn that bit on and then we're gonna make sure the mixer motor is turned off so while we're evacuating the tank right while we're we're having the product go out of the tank what we do is we want to turn off the mixer so generally speaking you would cause some product either our product damage or something like that if the mixer was running now there are some cases where you want the mixer running the just about the whole time so this is just a, again an example of set um, when that goes into play we're going to say that the timer or the step was done the tank level is going to be less than zero or the batch not active okay and what I'm saying is that with the batch not active and down here on the next uh, where it comes up here we're going to shut off the outlet so you can see it, it draining down where it lasts 90 70 60 uh, percent so as soon as the tank level right here drops below we're going to close that off and turn off the the uh we're going to turn off the outlet and then as soon as the outlet's turned off and then the outlet valve is turned off we're going to turn off the start light now what happens again when it comes down to this batch not active okay why do we have the batch not active in there so let's just go ahead and run one and then we'll go over here and say okay we're going to stop it midways now that means the batch not active allowed it to pass through all the other steps and come back up to the initial step so now that the sequential function chart can actually come in and make a proper decision the next time the start button is pressed so right here, you'll see that it comes over here. It picks this side, which is the evacuation. We're basically evacuating the product uh, because we want to start a clean, fresh batch. And again, to, to see that these two uh, syntax really are, are the same thing. It's just looking for that step to be done and it's looking for the inlet valve to not be open or the batch to not be active, right? Um, again, so the batch always gets turned off um, when it, like if a stop happens or an e-stop happens, the batch gets turned off, right? So if you can come over, come over and see that. Um, now, if we go over here and hit the start button and the batch is, again, uh, the batch is active, then this last hat, this last section right here gets completely ignored. The only thing we're, ignore, we're, we're using is the tank level. So we're going off the tank level as soon as it's above are equal to or above 20, uh, 1250 and the inlet valve is open, then we're gonna transition to this next spot. So that's a basic uh, small illustration of a sequential function chart and the way one would work, uh, especially in a simple scenario like this simple of a batching system. But again, I wanted to show you uh, the ways to kind of get through that because if it was stuck right here, right? And let's just say we were stuck right here okay and we hit the stop button and right now it would have stayed in this step but what we have is we have batch not active right so we have not bat at batch active which allowed it to finish out now that's a very important thing to have because that's the way we're trying to recover okay uh, and the only way we can go and make this decision again whether to go left or right as far as the branch and which which direction and which control you want to do is to actually put it back into its original step where above that branch to make that decision now in order to do that you have to verify that you have to make sure that you have the proper controls in there to allow it to step its way through or else you would have started right back where we were okay now you can choose to start back exactly where you were and that's perfectly fine but in this case, what we wanted to do is make sure that we came in and make a decision with our sequential function chart on what we can do to make sure we get good quality. So I'm trying to give you a, a kind of a good illustration um, of this and how this would work and making a decision with a sequential function chart. Now, when it comes to programming this, these are some there are some caveats and things to look for when it comes to programming sequ sequential function charts. Um, yes, you can use a pause, you can use 
uh, program controls and stuff like that. I tend not to do that as much as possible because then it creates more confusion than it does tend to help. So what I end up doing is make in my controls and my transitions and the, the things that I'm doing and decision making processes I'm doing inside of my sequential function chart, I'm keeping them um, where they can control themselves. In other words, they can always get back to where the point of you know starting. And again, sequential function chart should be as simple and as easy to transition and understand um, as they possibly can be. They really shouldn't be really complex um, when it gets down to um, using the program controls and stuff like that, like pauses, uh, holds, unpause, runs, and stuff like that. I've, t I've seen it have way too much problems with like uh, phase manager and stuff of that nature. So with that said, uh, hopefully you learned a lot from this video and we'll see you guys on the next one.